Hi there, good morning. It's me, again, with yet another Spider-Man video. No, I don't believe this is a Spider-Man channel, but is it becoming one? Well, that's to be seen, I guess, because I may or may not have another one in the works right now. But that's another topic entirely, and subject to change, so try not to dwell on it, dear viewer. Because today, we're just going to kick back, relax, and compare some wholesome voices. Specifically, the different Spider-Man voices we've been treated to throughout the years. From the first, to the last. Now, please remember, this is entirely my opinion, and mine alone. So, feel free to call me a smooth brand idiot in the comments if we don't exactly agree, okay? So. Ladies and gentlemen. Fasten your seatbelts. Starting off, we have the very first voice for our titular wall crawler, Paul Souls. Duplicated my web power. Let's see if you've got the spider strength to go with it. So yeah, S tier for my boy here. He deserves it. This man had nothing to go off of except for the original comics and the script they handed him, and he pulled it off spectacularly. I can only really hear his voice whenever I read the original Ditko and Lira. It just fits so well. Moving on, we next have Ted Schwartz, who, while not having a particularly memorable or even lengthy run as the character, definitely did Peter Parker justice with his voice. Sheesh, I've webbed my way all over this town, but no vulture. Hey, where'd my clothes go? Wait a minute, I've got it. I could get a quote from my old roommate, Harry Osborne, and at the same time borrow some of his clothes. Not bad, Petey, old boy, not bad. He sounds so much younger in his rendition compared to Souls, which I'm not the biggest fan of since he was playing an adult Peter, but I'll let it slide. For these reasons, I'm placing him in the C tier. Next, we have Dan Gilvezon, who was actually my very first introduction to the character aside from the Raimi films. We had an old VHS of Spider-Man and his amazing friends, and I watched the absolute hell out of it. Can I do your windshield? The wall crawler! The webhead! Just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man! Turn there! Oh, it's your friendly neighborhood dummy. His voice is much closer to Schwartz than Souls, but because of his more memorable performance and, in my opinion, more Spider-Man sounding voice, I'm putting him right to B tier. And after Gilvazon, we have, drum roll please, the man, the myth, the legend, Christopher Daniel Barnes. One of the most downright iconic voices for the character, and really, I just adore his voice. I can't read the 90s to early 2000s Spider-Man comics without hearing him specifically. If this is going to work, I can't be a millimeter off! What? No! Now let's try this little tango again, shall we? He just brought such a well-rounded performance to the role. And for that reason, he's straight to S tier, baby. Give him that crown, he deserves it. And shaking things up a little, I present to you Reno Romano, who gets his own category because, well, because he's just that good. I'm kidding, but when I was younger, this was my Spider-Man. From how much I played Spider-Man 2000, to my love for the unfortunately short-lived Unlimited show, he became the only voice that I felt fit the character 100%. Listen, I realize what this means. Forget about helping me with Omnitech. I can handle Rhino. Rhino by yourself? Thanks, Cat, but no thanks. Look, being Spider-Man has given me a lot and taken a lot away, but one thing never changes. My responsibility to use my powers for others before myself, no matter what the cost. There are innocent people at Omnitech, and they need our help right now. I won't let them down. Then I'll stop Venom. And this time, it's for the last time. Now I've recently changed my views on that, but you can't deny that he was a fantastic pick for the role, and I would immediately lose it to hear him again. Next, well, you're gonna get mad at me, 
Or, well, hopefully not, but next we have Tobey Maguire. And yes, I know what you're thinking. He's live action. Toby doesn't belong in a voice actor ranking. But you'd be wrong, because he voiced the character in the movie tie-in games for the Raimi films. Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, God Bless Its Divine Soul, and Spider-Man 3. Anyway, I'm sorry, but his performance was pretty terrible in all of them. Don't believe me? Shoots me, throws things, curses me out, and he wants to be saved? Sheesh, wonder what he'd do if he was a bad guy. Is that enough for you? Looking good. Thanks, Pete. No, seriously, I would definitely. I think Mr. Jameson had a job for you. Why don't you go in and see him? <laughs> You're lost, babe. This good? You've hardly said three words all night. Is everything all right? I figured you were talking enough for both of us. Peter, what's gotten into you lately? Nothing that's stopping your gums from flapping wouldn't solve. Are we done? Good. He's going into D tier. End of story. Neil Patrick Harris is next, who I loved in the new animated series. Now, weirdly enough, I thought it was Christopher Daniel Barnes when I first watched it for some reason. I think I've stated it enough times now for you to get it. I was a dumb child. Anyway, Harris was great in the role. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. By the way, you might come across a Peter Parker over on the other side. I ran into him earlier. Oh, what a relief. Did he mention me? Go! Five bombs. Where are they? Alexi, come in, Alexi. Um, Alexi can't come to the phone right now. Can I say who's calling? He's tied up at the moment. <laughs> but I'll be taking his place in a sec. Diamonds, girl's best friend. Glad you dropped in. We're gonna have a blast. Five seconds to recharge. Better make your next shot count. And even came back to voice the character once again in Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Let me guess. Two men enter, one man leaves. Am I right? Wow, love your headdress. Is that from the Skull Collection? May I suggest an accoutrement? Perhaps something from the Webbing Collection. Ha! Ah, classic. <laughs> he brought a great younger yet still mature Spider-Man to the role, and I enjoy that immensely. I'd love to hear him in the role again someday, but for now, he's sitting tight in A-tier. After him, we have... Oh, God. What is wrong with you? Sean Marquette. Now, I have nothing against this guy, but holy hell, this is such an unbelievably annoying voice for the character. It drills holes into my ears every time I hear it. It's like nails on a chalkboard. Come on, get up. Why can't you keep this electric guy you're supposed to be keeping in prison in prison? And that lady, the silver lady that captured Eddie the other day. Why couldn't she? Peter. You need to call- I need to quit getting almost killed by stupid people is what I need. But, it does fit Peter being an annoying little jerk throughout most of Ultimate quite well. So he's heading to B tier. Good performance for what it needed to be, but god do I hate it. Next is Alistair Abel, from a surprisingly obscure game, Rise of the Imperfects, which I had as a child and didn't actually know how to play at all. It also kind of scared me, so I didn't play it very much. I did, however, play it exclusively because Spider-Man was in it. And honestly, I'm just not a fan of Abel's performance. Parker. Oh, well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. I'm not the same man you knew before. Yeah, you're telling me. I didn't know you could get any uglier. Prepare to die, Spider-Man. Bring it. It just doesn't fit the character very well. And A makes a guy from Queens sound like he's from Southern United States. And B, it makes him sound like he doesn't even really want to be there. You know what we call that? We call that a web sling and ass kicking. I don't know, it's hard to explain. He's in D tier. Give Toby some company. Next is James Arnold Taylor, 
Now, I can't say much about this performance because here's where we start to hit the generic high school Peter. Oh my god, listen to how young and relatable yet so cool he sounds. Era that we have not broken out of since. That was really good. Hey, cool. Awesome. Well done. Unbelievable. Fantastic. Amazing. Spectacular. Incredible. Outstanding. Superb. That's unbelievable. Now that was amazing. That With a few exceptions, of course. He's going in C, because really, I just don't know where else to put him. But let me gush for a moment about one of my personal obscure favorites, Quentin Flynn. Sure thing. I just love being a target. Show off. Uh, excuse me, is this the ferry to Staten Island? If I knew then what I know now, would I have gone to that exhibit? Would I have let that radioactive spider bite me? That's a very tough question. Sure, but fighting crime really puts a crimp in my social life. And then there's the army of lunatics out there who'd love to play hockey with my scum. So being Spider-Man isn't all money and glamour. Well, there is no money. But I do get to kick the stuff in guys like the Scorpion. His performance reminds me of a mix between Ted Schwartz and Christopher Daniel Barnes. And I wish we could see more of him outside of Ultimate Alliance. He's solid A tier for me. And now, the man who arguably has the most popular voice for Spider-Man, Josh Keaton. If you grew up with Spectacular, Superhero Squad, Shattered Dimensions, and Edge of Time, then this is probably the voice you most associate with Peter Parker. I think, I think I'm in hell. The CEO, it's me. What? That's, that's insane! How can that be? Holy shock! Peter, now! Move! Move! Let me explain it all to you. Explain it to my rapidly retreating backside! And it's not hard to see why. Keaton nailed the role as both younger and older versions of the character. Actually, I do. And who are you supposed to be? Spider-Man. The real one. The real one? You don't even have the costume right. I'm in mourning for my buried rat. To the point that he's seen by most to be the definitive Spider-Man voice actor. And I'm hard pressed to disagree. So Keaton, my boy? No, not that one. You're going in S tier. Up next, we have Ben Diskin, who just doesn't quite hit the mark. Nap time for Spidey. Medic! No, seriously, it's about time. Sure, why not? Spider powers rock. I'm not cool with this whole big brother is watching thing. Hey, didn't we used to be on the same side? I'm allergic to registering. Seriously, I break out in hives. You think a guy wearing a mask wants to register? Hello? Register? Come on, I don't even have a driver's license. Have you ever thought about learning a trade instead? He's meant to be playing an adult version of Peter in Ultimate Alliance 2 but his performance makes him sound like he's 12. And it's unfortunate that there's no real improvement for his next performance in one of the Marvel superhero Lego films that were all pretty terrible anyway, D tier. Now I'm sure some of you guessed who was next and uh, it's, it's Mike Vaughn. Now where is Cage in his search party? Where is MJ? MJ. You know, some people say that hate is a strong word, but for me at least, it's not nearly strong enough to describe my feelings for this performance. No, 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 I don't hate it. I despise it. I wake up in a cold sweat at night thinking about it. That voice, it's like nails on a chalkboard. You're right. I could use a little more fun in my life. Yeah? Yeah. F tier. No, no, it's gotta go lower. Electro, you unbelievable loser! Fight this thing! Reject 
Send it. Send it to the dungeon. Moving on, it's Drake Bell, a sort of debated performance in the Spider-Man community. He's definitely good, and he fits the role of a younger Spider-Man perfectly, but a lot of the time, the scripts he's given are just terrible. Spider-Man experience. Let me explain the whole Spidey sense thing. It's like an early warning system that kicks in whenever there's danger. And maybe it's on the blink. Hello? This thing on? Every now and then, though, he really shines. I can't believe I let her down. But why should Aunt May be any different? You're always hurting the people closest to you. Uncle Ben, Harry, and if you can't even get a cake home, how are you gonna be one of the greats? And that's why, despite my very shaky relationship with the Ultimate TV show, I'm putting Drake in A tier. I'm hoping he's able to return to the role someday in a better medium than Disney XD shows and Lego shorts. Now Sam Regal is next. And good God, I have never heard a more overperformed and whiny version of Peter Parker. Ah, oh, you must be Schultz. Your goon said you were ugly, but whoa! <laughs> he was being charitable. Think you can take me, huh, freak? <laughs> well, I'm not gonna make it easy for you. Oh, come on, all your friends did. It's terrible, but not quite on the level of uh, Web of Shadow Spidey. Anyway, he has some good moments, but like Drake Bell, he's handed some god-awful lines most of the time. He's going in D tier, though, because I just can't justify putting him any higher when scenes like this exist. You just buy yourself a ticket to hell! Oh no, I'm so scared! <laughs> Yuri Lowenthal is next, and boy do I love his performance. He's handed some pretty bad quips and puns a lot of the time, but his abundance of slower, more personal moments sell this voice for me a hundred percent. Of course. Uh, if you'd like to seek a position with more of a future... I, I came here to work for you because of what you've got up here. And that's not going anywhere. So neither am I. A lot of folks will call him the absolute best voice for Spider-Man, but honestly, I'd say that's probably due to the heaping pounds of recency bias that a lot of current Marvel fans are buried under. But that's not to say that I don't enjoy his performance. It's absolutely fantastic. I love Yuri Lowenthal as Peter Parker. I just wouldn't put him on the same level as Keaton or Barnes. So a firm A-tier position has just opened up for him. Coming in in the spot behind him is Robbie Damon, who is, uh, well, he's passable, I guess. Unfortunately, it's just another wow, I'm so young and relatable voice, but this time it's paired with it being placed squarely. He's trying to encase me ah, in an electric grid cage, just like the one on my box of Avengers Instant Oatmeal. Now why? You're faster than I gave you credit for, Spider-Man. That's because we have to move quick if we're gonna catch the real- Wait, you- You know who I am? I'm aware of you. What I'm not sure about is your intention, which is why you're coming with me. He knows who I am! This is growing tiresome. I'm telling you, I'm not the guy you're after. There's some sort of ghost up here. In the worst Spider-Man show we've ever gotten, now, he's a bit better in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, though. No. There's something else. Something ugly. Something malignant. <laughs> Frank West, ladies and gentlemen! Okay, okay. You got me. What the hell are you doing here? What? <sighs> he's been tailing me for the past hour which saves him from the F tier and instead lands him in D tier, which is miles above F tier, trust me. And next is someone who I never thought would fit the role well, but did so phenomenally. Jake freaking Johnson. And only Spider-Man. What a day. I'm pretty sure you know the rest. You see, I saved the city, fell in love, I got married, saved the city some more, maybe too much. My marriage got... 
Seriously, was anyone else expecting him to deliver an older, washed up Peter this well in Into the Spider-Verse? I want more of him, I really do. Everything about his performance just purely embodies an older, more jaded and tired Lee and Ditko run Peter Parker. Peter? Hey, Aunt May. So this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm pretty sure that I'm from an... An alternate dimension. Yeah. You look tired, Peter. Well, I am tired. And older. And thicker. Yeah, I've heard that already. Oh, geez, are there sweatpants? I know this is gonna sound a bit controversial, but he's heading straight to S tier. Again, these are just my opinions, folks. And last, but certainly not least, in the same film as Jake Johnson, we have Chris Pine, who I honestly thought was also Jake Johnson. Watching the film for the first time is easy to miss. They sound very similar, but the tone and inflection of both voice actors is very different. Celebrity. I saved a bunch of people, fall in love, saved the city. And then I saved the city again, and again, and again, and again. And I did, uh, I did that. Whereas Johnson sounds almost exhausted in his speech patterns, Pine's voice is brimming with confidence and enthusiasm. He's perfect for a peak 90s era Spider-Man role, and I love his performance, even though we didn't get to see nearly enough of him in the film itself. Are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just resting. Can't you get up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always get up. <clears throat> Coffee's probably not a good sign. Fine. Now. Listen, we gotta team up here. We don't have that much time. This override key is the only way to stop the collider. Swing up there. Use this key. Push the button and blow it up. You need to hide your face. You don't tell anyone who you are. No one can know. He's got everyone in his pocket. What? If he turns the machine on again, everything you know will disappear. Your family. Everyone. Everyone. Promise me you'll do this. And for that reason, I'm placing him in A tier for now. But I honestly do hope that changes with future roles. Okay, that's it. Holy hell, that took way too long. But honestly, it was worth it. I love being able to talk about Spider-Man. And getting to talk about voice acting, another huge passion of mine at the same time, is just a really big treat for me. I hope you all enjoy this one. And if you'd like to give your own rankings in the comments, please feel free. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the abundance of different voice actors we've had in the role over the years. And hey, if you like this break from the norm and want to see more, let me know. I'd definitely be down for doing something similar in the future. With that being said, I'm Cake Vibes as always, signing off for the night. So, uh, you should get some rest. You need it. Good night. <laughs>